My name's Austin from the Beer and Pretzel Podcast, and for this week's episode, we are allowing you to preview our spinoff podcast, Forever a Gnome, a solo role-playing game podcast. This show is exclusive to our Patreon donors. It will be released bi-weekly on Tuesday mornings. As a tease for some of the awesome content we are publishing there, we are releasing the first episode of Forever a Gnome for everyone to listen to. If you enjoyed the episode and want to hear more, the way to support the show and get more fun exclusives from our podcast, head over to patreon.com slash the Beer and Pretzel Podcast. With that said, enjoy the episode as I play This Wretched Hunt of Mine from Feral Indie Studio. Welcome guys to Forever a Gnome. This is our first episode of our solo role-playing game series from the Beer and Pretzel Podcast. My name is Austin. Today I'm playing this wretched hunt of mine. And this interesting role-playing game, only 12 pages long, so pretty easy to read through. And you can kind of sit down and play it pretty quickly. In this, I am playing a lone hunter in a remote and inhospitable place, hunting out a terrible and dangerous monster. The monster has taken something from me. Something important. Something irreplaceable. I have vowed that I will kill it, even if it's the last thing I do in this life. But this monster knows I am following it, and is far more clever than I could have ever imagined. I am alone, and am at my wit's end quickly realizing that I am unlikely to survive this ordeal. My supplies are dwindling, the place is dangerous, and all the while the monster waits for a turn to strike. I will be attempting to survive this place and overcoming every hardship. I'll be using my wits and supplies and my fighting prowess to try to combat the environment and the monster. In this game of this wretched hunt of mine, all you need is a deck of cards with no jokers, a six-sided die, which is right here, and a tumbling block tower, so Jenga, which I have set up to my right, and ten tokens of some kind, which represent the monster's health. And usually in this game, as it's a solo role-playing game, you document your journey with the monster by writing a journal. But the game also suggests that you can use a more physical journal like audio or video log. As we will be recording the events and trials of every day as I hunt down this monster. There are only two outcomes. One, I'm going to defeat this monster. And two, I'll perish alone and unmourned with only the monster as my witness. So in this game, I have set up my Jenga tower to my right, which I'll be using for most of the actions. The goal of this game is I'll be taking a couple pulls from it, and if I can survive the day and take off a couple pulls, I will injure the monster. But if the tower falls, I do too. So, let's jump into this. Thanks for listening to this first episode of Forever Gnome. Check back in two weeks as I'll be playing a new solo role-playing game as I'll be doing this bi-weekly on this Patreon. Day one. My name is Linus and I'm hunting a monster. I came prepared but I don't know if it'll be enough and I fear I will not survive this ordeal. But I have to keep going. I'm recording this in case I don't make it back. There's at least something, anything to remember me by. If you are listening to this, let it be known that I tried and I did not go quietly into the dark. The monster is near and I can feel it. So now we're going to be starting day one of my journey as I go to hunt down this monster. So I'll be rolling a die, and I'll be drawing that many cards from my deck, and I'll be having them face down 
A low number means my day was uneventful, while a high number means it lasted well into the night. As there's more than the monster out here to test me. I O four. Okay, so it's gonna be a long day for Linus. I'm picturing this character as an ancient Greek warrior, or maybe the son of a warrior from the army. And maybe this monster came into our farm and killed my mother and sister while my father was out at war. My father wasn't there to protect our family, only me. And I could only stay and look in horror as the creature came in and took everything from me. But now, I'm going to go out and take everything from it. So, with four, I'm going to draw four cards, and I'm going to start turning them over as I start the hunt of day one. And then after that, after I combat the day, I will uh, hunt the monster, and then after, we'll be recorded a little bit for the journal. Okay, so number one is a two of diamonds. I stopped to rest, exhausted and stressed. For the first time since you arrived, it almost feels peaceful. For a moment, I let my guard down and closed my eyes. How tired is your body? It asks. So at this point, I just started the journey, so I'd like to think that I'm not tired at the moment. Maybe to get to this place, I hiked a long journey to get to this dark and wide forest. But as I rest underneath a tree, I'm not here to catch my breath, but to prepare myself for what comes next. The next card is a four of diamonds. I spot something in the distance and seek it out. I find a small landmark, a sign that someone has been here before me. What do I think it was? Why did they come here? So a sign. Um, so at this point, because we're just barely getting to the woods, I'm going to think that it's a sign to keep people out. Here be monsters. Stay out of these woods. Of course, I ignore it and go forward. Four of hearts is the next one. There was someone important in my old life. Someone you chose to be close to and someone who, who reciprocated in turn. What did they call you? Can you remember their name? So I spent my life as a poor, a poor member of society by the docks often, trying to get whatever fish I could get that the fishermen tossed aside for my family to support us in some way. And I think I met an old man, old Zeke, who... If he had leftover fish, or sometimes even if he didn't have a lot of leftovers, he would give me something. And not just some old, dried up fish, baked by the hot sun. But maybe an oyster, some shrimp, an octopus, something unique that he found at sea. To satisfy my curiosity of the open water that I've never traveled, also to help my family. And the last card I draw is a three of clubs. So three of clubs. My food goes bad. Spoiled or ruined from the carelessness. What does it smell like? Am I hungry? I'm not hungry yet. This is still day one. But it is unfortunate that I've already lost my food. Day one on this trip. And I guess maybe it was fish or something from the docks that... It just doesn't survive this long out in the open air. Because of this, I'm forced to take one from the tower. So I'm going to be pulling. And I get a very easy pull for the first one. But things are going to get way harder for me in the future. Okay, so that was day one. I survived. Now at this point, I roll the six side die again. And I take that many pieces from the tower. The higher the number, the more gruel and difficult to hunt. And as long as the tower remains standing, the monster suffers a wound, and I remove one out of its ten. So I have to survive ten rounds. This is going to be rough. The lioness will do whatever it takes to hunt down the beast. I drew five, so that's, you know, not a good start. I will try to survive, though. Because there's a much longer journey ahead. One is pulled out. Let's see if I can keep going with this. 
What's interesting in this game to how a comp is a combination of dice, cards, and Jenga Tower. Obviously, the most popular game involved in the Jenga Tower is Dread, the horror-based role-playing game. It's an awesome game, but it really only uses a Jenga Tower, and it's really up to the DM to create a fun experience that makes sense around the fall and rise of a Jenga Tower. Three. Jeez, I have two more. <laughs> oh, this is going to be rough. But this game is kind of interesting how it combines everything. Okay. One more for Austin. Oh, jeez. Alright. So right now, obviously, it's not a visual podcast. But if you want to picture anything, picture poor Linus to the side hunting this beast. The beast is close. He gets some swipes at me, but I'm able to survive and get a hit on it and remove one of its lives. I survive the day two. The beast runs off, and I will pursue it. I will, on day two, or I guess, let's record our journal. Take a moment to consider the events of the day. My hardships, the successes, what happened during the hunt, and how I'm feeling during all of this. Linus sets it aside, recovering from the short battle with the beast before it ran off. Today was a rough day. While I did a little bit of exploring, I lost my food. I thought back about some friends that helped me along the way in my life. I thought about my family, who were taken too quickly from me. Successes? Not a lot, but I had a long fight with a beast. Let's say for every pull, it was a minute, so I had a five-minute long battle with it. Which in real time, it feels like forever. And it wore me down a little bit, but it didn't strike. I clipped off a piece of it and before it retreated into the woods. Let's jump into day two, where I have to draw three cards. Okay. So the first one is a ten of diamonds. So basically this PDF is set up that there is um, ace through king of every suit. So you can just go to the page and find what you pull. The wilderness is strange. When you are deliberate, it checks your every move. But when you go with an empty mind, it feels easy, almost like a dream. Is this place familiar to you? This place is familiar like that is of a dream. Because this whole ordeal, maybe this was my destiny to hunt this beast. I have seen this in my dreams before, in what my whole life's journey leads up to this battle with the beast. The next card I pull is a Jack of Spades. Ooh, fun. I haven't gotten a spade yet. I cannot sleep. I stare out into the night. My eyes catch sight of the monster, its silhouette moving in strange, uncanny motions. Why do my legs tremble? And then I draw from the tower. So as I'm going to take another pull, unfortunately I'm taking a lot of pulls for only day two. I see the monster hiding out its silhouette. My legs tremble from the cold and the rain. Of course, the beast is scary. I fought it before, but really what's scary about it is that this time, like before when I fought it in daylight, I can't see all of it. I complete the pull. The last card of day two is a nine of diamonds. So nine of diamonds is, I feel a nagging dread. I shout to no one and realize how utterly alone I am. Why can't I remember what my own voice sounds like? Draw from the tower. Uh Uh-oh, this is getting rough for Austin. So, I think at this point it would make sense for my character that he's kind of, even though it's only the second day, he's crackling under the pressure, under the hunt, and he's starting to go a little bit mad. That's why I scream out into the night. I don't even remember what my own scream sounds like. I'd have to only my own voice. I complete the pull. And I complete day two. Let's see if I can survive the battle with the beast. I roll my d6. And I get number five. Oh my gosh. Okay. 
Day two. Linus's journey might end soon, if I'm being honest. Oh no. So I'm at the point that the tower is mostly intact. The tower is mostly fine, but it's just that I don't have a lot of good angles on it, and it's starting to become a little bit crooked. It's solid, but it's a little bit crooked. And I'm about to get my second. I'm kind of proud of how good I'm doing, actually. How many pulls I'm having to do. Oh, no. So, how does the Battle of the Beast go? Another five minutes with it. At this point, I would assume it's either the dead of night or maybe early in the morning where I confront it in its cave. How does it keep getting away all the time, even when it fights me for five minutes or more? That was the third pull. At some point, this tower most likely, if I can take ten wounds from it, I will be super lucky. But I feel like Linus is up against a force too powerful for him yet. Maybe if he aged over 10 years. I was hoping that this was going to be John Wick above medieval times. Not medieval times, of Roman times. But I don't think it's going to be. <laughs> okay, this is my fourth pull. At some point, you guys are probably going to hear this tower collapse. And there's the box for the tower collapsing, but not the tower itself yet. Oh, come on, please. I want to survive. There we go. Okay. Haha. <laughs> I made it. <sighs> I survived another day. It was a short day. I didn't encounter much. But my battle with the beast was long, and I'm starting to get tired. I think I'm crackling under the pressure. Just seeing it out in the cornfield, hiding amongst the corn only seeing its silhouette dance like a mad jester sends shivers down my spine. I cried out for help even though I know no one is around. But yet I couldn't hear my own voice. Why? Day three. Four. Never longer day. When am I gonna get a one? <laughs> help save me. Two clubs. The first one. I look down at my weapon, the weapon I intend to kill the monster with. The game asks, is it old or worn? Is it precious to me? Why did I pick this weapon to kill the beast? Well, this weapon, a short sword, was the backup weapon for my father who went to war. He gave this to me to protect the family. He was anticipating that I would never use it, or if I did, it would only be to ward off bandits. At most, no one anticipated what was going to come. Neither did I as I sat in the corner of our small house, crippled in fear, holding this short sword between my legs. Couldn't raise it, though, to attack it. It only looked at me. It let me go like a cat playing with it. Cat playing with a mouse. To play another day with it. Seven of Clubs. When I prepared for the hunt, I forgot something essential. A tool or object that would have been invaluable. And it was forgotten. What was it? Um, probably my father's shield. It's probably a backup shield or a shield he left behind that I should have brought to improve my defenses. But either because I didn't want to bring a heavy shield on my journey or just plain stupidity of leaving it behind. I left it behind, and now I only got this short sword to protect me from its gaping jaws. And for that, I had to take a pull for leaving behind my shield, or my father's shield. Oh, okay, so now it's the first time of taking a side piece away from the Jenga tower. That's not good. I've been, at this point, I've been trying to get ones only in the middle. I'm running out of options. So I had to grab one from the side. All right, next, a 10 of spade. I remember stories told to me as a kid, bedtime stories and fairy tales of monsters and folklore. Perhaps the monsters from one of these stories? What does it remind you of? So this monster wasn't from any stories I've heard before. 
or any story that I've heard from anyone told before. But my journey is a story like my mother used to tell me about the legend of Hercules and his trials. Linus kind of looks at this quest as his own Hercules journey. Unlike Hercules, I don't think I'm going to return. King of Diamonds is next. A freak accident befalls you as you explore. Bone and blood are exposed. In the distance, you know the monster's watching. Does it hurt? Leave this card in front of you. When all kings have been drawn, you are killed and the game ends. So, I'm journeying. I'm still anticipating at least another hour or two before I will catch up to a monster. But little did I know, it's smart. Smarter than I would ever think it could be. It laid a trap, an ambush. It came in, it swiped at me, it tore at my Achilles heel. It then ran off. I'm wounded. I'm going to leave this king in front of me. In case I draw all four kings, I will die. Even if the Jenga Tower has not fallen. At this point, to be honest, it's probably going to fall first. But I believe I can do this. Lioness will do anything it takes to extract revenge on this monster. And as I fight it, I'm going to roll d6 to see how many pulls I need to take. One. Perfect. Well, that makes me feel way better. Okay, so... Oh, no. So, it looks like before I said I pulled one from the side, I'm pulling the other side now. So, which is at the very base. So, there's like a stack of two at the bottom, and then there's just one single one supporting the whole rest of the tower. So, not super good. I completed day three. The ambush, I didn't anticipate. While I did catch up and fight the monster briefly, it ran off. I think because it wanted to toy with me more. I'm wounded, tired, and exhausted, but my revenge fuels me. Day four. Roll the D6 to see how long my day's journey is going to be. I roll a one. I'm having some good luck. Ace of hearts. Ace of hearts. A piece of my psyche howls for the hunt and demands the death of the monster, filling me with fury. When did your hunt begin? It began, uh, began three days ago. Yeah. I, said, I guess four days ago. I set out and I arrived at the forest three days ago. And maybe five days ago, my family were killed by this beast. Leave this card in front of you. Once per game, you may choose to not pull any piece from the tower during a hunt. Discard this card. Awesome. Okay. I combat the beast. This is day four. That's five pulls. I'm going to elect to use this ace. And I'm not going to take pulls. And I'm going to survive day four. This monster has now lost four out of its ten health. Only six more days to go. Today was a good day. I was able to walk off the wound. Make my own, um, I guess, brace for it. Some kind of walking stick to assist me. A crutch, and I hiked without mostly any issues because the hunt, my psyche howled for the death of the monster, and it fueled me to push through the pain. My battle with the monster is brief, and it's on to day five. One again, I pull a queen of clubs, a queen of clubs. I settle in to have my daily meal of whatever rations you have left or food you manage to scavenge. It's unpleasant to say the least. What would you rather be eating right now? So at this point, it's just like dried up bread. The only thing that sustained me. And maybe bits of rabbit. I would much rather be sitting by the shoreside, digging around, begging for scraps. Is anything they would throw me, the sailors, would be better than this. At the end of the day, I combat the beast. Day five. I have to take two pulls. 
Uh, at this point, the tower is shaken. Any movement I do to it, it's not supported from the bottom, so it sways a little bit. Alright, I'm gonna have to start pulling from the side of upper levels. Oh no. Everything I do, it rotates a little bit. At some point, there's gonna be a lovely sound of the Jenga tower falling and breaking the. Oh wow, okay. I pulled it, one out of two, and it rotated a lot while I was pulling that. It almost fell over. I might not make it halfway through this journey. I had fun though. I, this is actually a really good solo role-playing game. I had my doubts about playing such a game with only 12 pages of rules to go off for a whole solo experience, but this game is actually really good. With solo role-playing games, it's kind of interesting, like, how can you make a game that's exclusive for solo players and not just a fun role-playing game for many of us to enjoy? Alright, I'm going to have to take another side piece. So at this point, I got two layers where there's only one block setting up the whole rest of the tower. Mostly at the bottom, too. Okay, I swipe at the monster, and I do never wound. I've taken out half its health. I'm feeling pretty good about myself at this point. I'm wearing down the beast, and I feel like soon, I'm able to catch up to it and plunge this short sword into its heart. Day six. My journey's gonna be three cards long. And the first one that I pull, seven of hearts. The seven of hearts is, wait, here. I had a family before this, a collection of connections you were born into and found. They're just a distant memory now. Why did you leave them? Draw from the tower. Well, going off what I was picturing, I only left them because they were killed. I guess my father I left behind, he's going to return to our home after this. He's, he's either going to find me there with his short sword soaked in the blood of the monster that killed his wife and daughter. Or he's going to come back and he's going to have nothing. It's a sad thought. Because of this, I have to take a draw from the tower. And every, everything I try to take is shaken. Oh, I actually just find one. Oh, one easy one. Perfect. Oh, no. Okay, here we go. Card two. Oh no, another king. This time, a king of clubs. You arrive back to find your shelter destroyed. There are signs that the monster has been here as well. Was this intentional? Of course it was. This monster, this beast, is smart. Honestly, probably smarter than me. Leave this card in front of me. When all four kings have been drawn, I am killed and the game ends. This is king number two. And, oh my gosh, look! My last card of day six is the King of Hearts. No, no, this is a different one. I attempt to sleep, but the nightmare returns. I am plunged into a screaming mirror image of the events that shattered your world. I guess that would be my family getting torn apart by this monster's large claws and talons. The night that ended your old life. As their lives ended, my new life began. What happened the night the monster came? He killed my family. He tore everything apart and he changed my life for the worse. And my whole goal now is to end his. And once again, this is my third king and I'm going to leave in front of me. When I draw the fourth one, regardless of the tower, um, the tower's condition, I will be killed off. At the end of day six, I roll again. Four pulls. I had a good journey. A good journey fighting through all this. I combated the monster multiple times. An environment, my own mind, nightmares, and my psyche. I honestly believe this is the battle that I'm going to break down to be too weak to finish. But who knows? At this point, I hope you're on the edge of your seat. That was probably a horrible sound to listen to. All right. Thanks for listening. This is Austin from the Beer and Pretzel Podcast, or in this case, Forever Unknown. 
This is the first episode. This episode is going to be released for everyone to listen to. All the other episodes that will be released bi-weekly will be only on Patreon, our Patreon exclusive. We have three tiers, and our middle tier, which is $5 a month, gives you everything our first tier has, and the inclusion of being able to listen to all the other podcasts we release, including Forever Known. Also, you'll be gaining access to all Beer and Pretzel podcast episodes before the air. I'll be releasing them as a whole entire episode instead of having to wait for episodes being drawn out over a course of two or three weeks. You can listen to it all at once. You'll also be invited to our Facebook group, our Discord group, and being given access to polls that allows you, the listener, to choose our next one-shot role-playing game to play on the Beer and Pretzel podcast. And of course, with our second tier, you get all that and Reverend Gnome, the solo role-playing game podcast. Thanks for listening. I had a good time playing this. Uh, this was a fun episode to record. And to give a shout-out to some of the people that helped make this possible, this game was designed by Feral Indie Studios. And you can find them at feralindiestudios.itch.io. Thanks to the, I believe it's the Fletcher Brothers, for providing this soundtrack for this podcast. They make awesome music, and I'll be providing a link to their website in the description below. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>